I don't mean to be so bold, but you know sometimes when you get to sing the blues, it gets kind of good to you. You get so damn good to me till I have to preach it. Hello, VC. Hello, good people. Cheers. It's Chris, your blues guy. Welcome back to Blues the Guy on Vinyl. Mmm. Hot cup of joe. Nothing like it. So, welcome back. How's it going, eh? Thanks for uh, tuning in, joining me here once again today. Today's video is another Vinyl Finds video. Uh, this is from a recent trip about maybe two weeks ago now uh, that I made over to uh, Heritage Posters and Music. That's the record store that's the closest to my house here. Uh, it's about uh, five blocks away. It's like not even a 10 minute walk. Uh, my buddy Jerry, the owner, operator, proprietor of that joint, um, in my opinion, uh, probably in terms of the record stores here in Calgary, probably the best uh, selection of blues records. But overall, he's just a, a great, great music store, record store in general. CDs, posters, all that stuff, t-shirts and that as well. Uh, but that generally is my, my go-to when it comes to blues. Uh, but he's also got a great jazz uh, section as well. And that's a lot of what I've got here today that I'm going to show. Uh, a lot of these I picked up on sale. Uh, they weren't in the $2 discount bins, but most of them weren't much more than 2 bucks. We're talking like anywhere from uh, you know, $4 to uh, uh, 6 7 bucks, with a couple of exceptions. So without further ado, let's get into this thing here, shall we? Uh, the first record is uh, from 1976. It's an American pressing. Uh, this is uh, recordings from 1943 through to 1945, and that is Lester Young and Prez Leaps Again, the uh, Lester Young with uh, the Kansas City 7. There's the uh, track listing right there. A beautiful sounding record on Soul Parade, which is a subsidiary of Pickwick. See if I can get show that a little better without the glare. There we go. Very cool looking label. Uh, sounds very good. Uh, it was pretty clean. I had to do a little bit of cleaning. A little bit of surface noise here or there, uh, but nothing that's uh, distracting at all. And I picked that up for uh, $4. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with, um, you know, a, even though it's a compilation in a sense, you can't really go wrong with 4 bucks for some great Lester Young. Uh, fantastic album, so I was very happy to find that. Uh, this next one was also four dollars. This is one of, from one of my favorite, not only overall jazz artists, but one of my favorite Canadian artists as well. This is also an American pressing, ironically, being that he's Canadian. This is from 1955. Uh, this is Oscar Peterson plays Jimmy McHugh. Oscar Peterson plays Jimmy McHugh. Uh, this is on Clef Records, and I've got a couple of others on this Clef label. And uh, it's been my experience that it's it sounds very good. Very good uh, overall sound quality and production value on this. Um, so on here you've got tracks like uh, When My Sugar Walks Down the Street, uh, On the Sunny Side of the Street, uh, I'm in the Mood for Love, uh, you know, classic sort of early jazz standards. Uh, I can't give you anything but love. Uh, what else is on here? You're my, uh, you're a sweetheart. So very, very good album. Um, I really like Oscar Peterson's uh, piano playing. He's He's got that sort of rollicking left hand where um, I was watching an interview uh, from years and years ago by uh, Ray Charles. And he was saying that the first time he heard Oscar Peterson, he could have swore there was two piano players playing. You know, and he was like, there's no way that's one guy. You know, he's just got that romping, rollicking left hand. And I love these sort of vocalized grunts that you can kind of hear if you listen very carefully, especially with a good set of headphones on. Um, you can hear very, very quietly in the background an almost subconscious 
sort of grunts and groans and vocalizations from Oscar Peterson. He's not singing or even scatting or humming. It just sort of comes out. I think he, that he just gets so into what he's doing that it just has sort of become his, his one of his trademarks, really. Uh, terrific album. Uh, next up, this one also, four bucks in the sale section of jazz. Uh, again, another one of my favorites. Again, a little bit more of an old tiny sort of an album. This one from 1956, and this is a Canadian pressing on Columbia. Uh, this is European Concert Recordings by Louis Armstrong, Ambassador Sash. Just in beautiful condition overall. It's... Uh, Considering that the jacket is white, really, you know, it's in pretty good shape. Um, a little bit of a pen mark there, but nothing that's going to bring a tear to my eye. It even still has sort of a nice gloss to the to the jacket as well. Very nice. As mentioned, this is on Columbia. Uh, it's a Columbia 6i, but I've never seen, at least in my uh personal collection and any of my experiences in, in real life. I've never seen a burgundy Columbia 6i like that. So I don't know if that's because it's a Canadian pressing or what the deal is. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't really find out too much when I was researching online with this. But it's it's definitely a you know a Columbia 6i. It's a first pressing. Uh, it's just that burgundy as opposed to that more familiar uh, black, white, and red so if any of you can let me know in the comments what's going on with that whole burgundy columbia 6i I'd, I'd love to know about it that's that's for me anyways from my experience a little bit more unusual but very cool uh sounds absolutely wonderful i'm a huge fan of satchmo uh louis armstrong Satch, satchel mouth uh tracks on here like uh, tin roof blues uh uh what else is on here uh muskrat ramble uh, be easier if I just ran it off the album cover, wouldn't it? Instead of squ squinting and straining to try to see what's going on. Uh, Royal Garden Blues, um, All of Me, uh, 12th Street Rag, uh, West End Blues, Tiger Rag. Rags are like ragtime tracks, right? It's sort of um, that go between or that bridge between traditional New Orleans jazz and the sort of more bluesy sounding stuff, ragtime kind of bridges both of those. And it kind of harkens back to an older style as well. So that's why a lot of times you'll see with Louis Armstrong or some of these older cats, you'll hear their track listings will have titles like, you know, blues or rag or stomp is another one that's very common as well. Uh, so, but they're not a, it's not a blues, a traditional 12 bar blues. It's a jazz number. It just has that more bluesy feel to it. So yeah, there you go. Ambassador Satch. Beautiful album. Great stuff. If you like Louis, I mean, his trumpet playing is almost second to none anyways. Fantastic. Next, hey, a couple of blues albums. Big surprise. Your blues guy's going to show some blues albums. Uh, this one I picked up for... Twelve dollars, and this is from another uh, favorite of mine, who's a Canadian musician. This is a Canadian uh, blues artist. I think he's out of Winnipeg, originally out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, uh, King Biscuit Boy, Mouth of Steel, as you can see by this giant, exaggerated harmonica. A great blues harp or harmonica player. King Biscuit Boy. I've got a, a number of his albums, and I really like his style. He's very much influenced by the Chicago blues harp players of the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Guys like Little Walter, uh, Big Walter, Shaky Horton, uh, James Cotton, uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, number two, to some extent, although he's kind of more plays in the style where uh, he uh, plays that really sort of crunchy uh, way of playing where he presses the, the harp right up against the microphone and blows directly into it and kind of creates that distorted sort of reverb sound that was made famous in Chicago in the, uh, by Little Walter in sort of the late 40s, early 50s. So on here you've got uh, Georgia Slop, Done Everything I Can, uh, Down the Line, Hoodoo Party, uh, Route 90. He covers uh, Robert Johnson's Terraplane Blues on here. 
uh, Lookout Mabel, uh, Richard Newell is his real name, aka the King Biscuit Boy. Just a great album, still in the shrink. It's always uh, a nice bonus when you find something like this still in the shrink. This is on uh, Stony Plain, which is a Canadian uh, label out of, I believe it's out of Edmonton here in Alberta, if I'm not mistaken. So Stony Plain Records, kind of a cool logo, very nondescript sort of a label on there. And last but not least, this one was uh, $12, which I would have been more than happy to pay twice that because I've really gotten into this guy lately. This is um, Photo Finish, Rory Gallagher. Again, just in beautiful condition. A uh, little bit of ring wear on the back, but uh, overall the album itself, just a gorgeous condition. The, uh, the vinyl, pristine. Just needed a good cleaning and that was it. Not a single tick or a pop or anything on that chrysalis label. Not so much a blues album, not as steeped in the bluesy stuff that Rory Gallagher is kind of known for. A little bit more leaning to the rock and rock and roll or rock style, although still very bluesy. So I would categorize this as more of a blues rock album as opposed to a straight up blues album like a lot of his other offerings. But uh, just a terrific album. On here you've got uh, Shin Kicker, uh, Cruise On Out, Cloak and Dagger, uh, what else is on here, Shadow Play, The Last of the Independents, Fuel to the Fire, uh, just an outstanding album, uh, co-produced by Rory Gallagher as well, there you go. Rory Gallagher, very passionate, uh, very powerful voice, I really love Rory Gallagher's voice. Uh, a terrific uh, electric guitar player, of course. He plays finger picking style as well as uh, bottleneck slide guitar. He plays electric guitar, acoustic, uh, mandolin. He plays harmonica as well. Just an all around, all around, all around outstanding uh, blues musician and blues rock musician. Uh, Rory Gallagher, but Gallagher actually. He's he's Irish, so uh, top of the morning to you. That's terrible. I just butchered that Irish accent. And lastly, a DVD to show you. Uh, this was, uh, I was just sort of standing at the, at, the, at the cash register, at the cash desk, waiting to, to pay for the stuff as Jerry was sort of adding it up. And then we sort of, we tend to haggle a little bit on the price. He's pretty good at sort of, you know, if your overall bills, let's say $46, and you'll say to him, well, how about 40 cash? He's usually pretty good. Yeah, 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 no problem. So as he was sort of tallying everything, I was just sort of looking around. And I saw this on the wall, a DVD. This is the Howlin' Wolf story, and uh, contains interviews with uh, former bandmates of Howlin' Wolf, such as Hubert Sumlin and others, uh, members of Howlin' Wolf's family or extended family, like Hubert Sumlin's wife, uh, Howlin' Wolf's daughters, uh, and uh, some bonus performances. And it's done in a documentary style. Uh, some of the footage and some of the material on this I have seen on other documentaries, just little clips or little blurbs taken. Uh, but a lot of it was very new and very fresh to me. Uh, Howlin' Wolf, as I've talked about before, is my favorite overall blues artist. So it was great to, to see this. I, had, you know, I picked this up for I think it was I think six bucks or seven bucks or something like that. So uh, the running time on this is pretty generous too. It's uh, it's over an hour and a half of stuff. And then some of the special features and bonus features bring it to almost a two-hour mark. So, um, you know, it talks about the Howlin' Wolf when he first starts off and does his earliest recordings at, uh, well, what became Sun Records, Memphis Recording Service with Sam Phillips in Memphis, Tennessee. And then it sort of follows his career as he was sort of destroying everybody in Memphis, just rocking down every house he played in in Memphis, and then eventually moved up to Chicago when Chess acquired his, uh, his contract from, from Sam Phillips. So really good stuff. There's tracks on here that feature uh, Willie Johnson on guitar, who was the Wolf's uh, first guitarist, and then uh, later on uh, Hubert Sumlin. Uh, that's Hubert right there. So yeah, outstanding stuff, really great. I always love finding uh, blues-related uh, content on DVD or, or books as well. You know, so this was just a nice little thing to pick up. Uh, I'll add, definitely add this to my uh, blues DVD collection. 
Uh, this is released through When the Sun Goes Down, which I had never heard of before. But apparently they have a whole a whole list or a whole bunch of these that they've done. Uh, they've done s uh, stuff based on uh, Chicago blues. They've done one on Lead Belly, Arthur Big Boy Crudup, uh, Sonny Boy Williamson, Blind Willie McTell, and they have DVDs and CDs of those artists and more. So I think I'm going to look through and maybe see if I can order some of this other stuff inside the uh, insert on the DVD because it looks really interesting. Rolling Stone gives it four stars. Associated Press gave it four stars as well as uh, Mojo, who actually gave it five out of five stars. So, uh, The Wall Street Journal says, The impact of the blues is wonderfully illuminated. These are uh, not dusty performances of interest to only uh, specialists in the genre. Uh, they are as immediately vivid and resonating when they were first released. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Helen Wolf, one of the most electrifying and entertaining performers in the blues of all time, and uh, my personal favorite overall bluesman. So there you go. It's going to do it here today for your blues guy. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in and joining me here today. Let me know what you think. Whip, bing, down in the old comment section as always, and I uh, look forward to talking to all of you again soon. Don't forget to do all the other YouTube things, and most importantly, keep digging and keep spinning. All right, everyone. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.